Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at the rock cycle. And the rock cycle, I think, has been taught since grade school. The idea that a sedimentary rock could uh, be pressured into a metamorphic rock, and that metamorphic rock could melt into an igneous rock, and the igneous rock could be exposed and weathered into a sedimentary rock. Um, don't know if that's true of, certainly not true of all rocks, that not all rocks are going to go through this cycle. Also, you have this idea that it would take a ridiculous amount of time for these things to happen. The concept really is m more simple. Any type of rock can be converted into a different type of rock under the right uh, circumstances. So we're going to look at how the three types of rock, metamorphic rock, igneous rock, and sedimentary rock, can be converted into different types of rock. So you're going to have melting. If you melt a rock under high pressure and temperature into a magma, then that magma, when it cools, could become igneous. So it didn't matter what type of rock it was or if, whether it was just the minerals. Uh, it's the, it could be converted into magma simply by melting and then turn into an igneous rock. Those igneous rocks could then be converted by weathering into sediments that could then possibly be put into sedimentary rock itself the sedimentary rock could be pressurized and the and the bonds reconfigured in a metamorphic rock so we're going to look at this uh, today just to give you the idea of interchangeability among the different types of rocks okay let's begin the rock cycle really is a concept it's not exactly true that every rock becomes every other rock that it goes around in a cycle the idea is that any rock can become a different type of rock if the conditions are right. Okay, so let's start with an igneous rock. If you have magma, which is melted mineral, melted minerals or melted rocks, so you could have a rock that's melted or you could have minerals that are uh, very, very hot and then could come out, the rock could cool as a rock. Okay, so once all of that stuff, it, imagine it's a big pot of chili or something like that. So you've got minerals that are very, very hot and in liquid form. As they come out of that liquid, as they cool and crystallize, they become a rock. All right, so if they come out as lava, so they're actually ex extruded from the ground and it burst out as lava, you're going to have one type of rock. And if that rock cools inside the ground, you have a different type of rock. So let's, let's look at what we have, okay? So let's imagine that that rock comes out as lava. It, it's an igneous rock because it's fire. Igneous means fire, so it was melted. So it came out of a volcano. So extrusive igneous rock used to be lava, okay? And then it, and then it cooled down, crystallized, and became a rock. So that is a igneous rock used to be in a volcano. In fact, this came out of a volcano. If uh, inside the volcano, let's say you have a magma chamber, that the hot spot under that magma that had, that had heated that into a, into a, a sauce, uh, let's say the hot spot is removed. It's gone to a different place. Something has moved. The Earth's, the Earth's crust has shifted in the hot spot somewhere else. So this rock cools back down underground. So the magma that never came out of the, the volcano, never was lava, was just melted rock, that magma, is cooled underground, and it's going to be called intrusive, okay? Intrusive igneous rock. So it doesn't really matter. Extrusive came out as lava, intrusive cooled down inside under the ground. Well, let's imagine that that whole solid rock that's under the ground, that the ground around it weathered away. Okay. It eroded, uh, weather hit it, uh, uh, water hit it, it ran off, and you ended up with what used to be that underground uh, magma chamber that now looks like a very big rock okay? because all of the dirt around it e um, eroded and left that uh, intrusive igneous rock. Well, now that it's exposed, it's possible to be weathered. It can be weathered, and so the weather can get to it, water can get in the cracks and then freeze into ice, and then that ice will bust the, the rocks apart. And eventually, you're going to break all that rock down, and you're going to have sediment. Okay, Sediment is that 
uh, is the little uh, stones and sand and silt and dirt that settles to the bottom of a usually a stream okay so it's going to break down to the bottom of the hill and then eventually be be driven away by the wind and by the water and by uh, by ice different types of, of uh, precipitation usually and then it goes down a stream it's sediment inside a stream so it's being carried along by the water most of the time it's transported along a stream um, to some body of water so either a pond or a lake or the ocean something like this and then it settles to the bottom again why it's called sediment that those little pieces of what used to be that huge mountain that used to be under the ground that used to be melted rock is now all settled at the bottom well as it's settled you're going to see that all of these pieces of sediment can be squished together by the weight of the water, weight of the dirt at the bottom of the pond or the ocean, and it's squished together and cemented together either by chemicals in the water or simply just by squeezing all of the material out and leaving just packed uh, sediments. In either case, this is called lithification. You're turning something into a stone. Lithos means rock. So you're stoning it, or you're making it into a rock. You squeeze all this little sand and pebbles and uh, silt and squeeze it real tight and it turns into a rock. Now it's called sedimentary rock. So if you have this idea that it could once have been um, igneous, meaning it once could have been melted rock and then it turns into an igneous rock and then if it weathers, those weathered stones and pieces of stones and silt and sand and deposits can be squished or cemented into a new rock. So this is the idea of a cycle. It's possible to take anything from anywhere and turn it into something else under the right conditions. Okay? Not that all of it happens. It's just that this is a possibility based upon what we can observe about the way the world works. Okay? So this sediment compacts, squishes together, cements, uh, mineral deposits can come in through the water and kind of cement it together like, like a rock and now it's sedimentary rock. Under the ground, if you have sedimentary rock that's covered up, covered up, covered up, and now it's under high pressure, high temperature, so now it's essentially semi-melted again. While it's semi-melted, it's very malleable. It can be squished and, and strained. Let's say that it's under a mountain. It finds itself under a huge uh, pressure those pressures and temperatures under the ground can change the configurations of the crystals in those minerals that make up the rocks. And then as those, as those um, bonds shift around and make new bonds, you can get a metamorphic rock. You can get something that has been changed. Metamorphosis simply means a change. It's gone from one form to another. So it was one form and now it's changed to another. So you could have a rock that is like limestone and limestone was a sedimentary rock, okay? But if it's shifted under high pressure, high temperature and the bonds reconfigure themselves, you can turn that limestone into something new. You could turn it into marble. So marble that you would make a statue out of is different from limestone. You could make a statue out of limestone but the marble is a different, different design. It's a different. It's highly uh, shiny and, and and it's different in quality than the limestone that it used to be. Okay, so a metamorphic rock has changed. So again, this rock cycle idea is that you could take a metamorphic rock and melt it. Okay, and if it melts and it's now magma then it could squish out of a volcano and become lava. It used to be a metamorphic rock. It's possible that that metamorphic rock at one time was a sedimentary rock that went under, underwent huge temperature and pressure differences, and then it moved. So this whole idea of a cycle, first of all, takes a ridiculous amount of time because it's for a rock to move from something to something to something, you'd have to, you would have to couch it in zillions of years. So not every rock has gone through the rock cycle, 
but the cycle is that idea that any rock can be converted into any other type of rock under the right conditions.